Long been my view that trans activists, not trans people, not people who identify as the opposite gender of what they actually are, uh, trans activists are actually misogynists. They hate women. And also, uh, they largely also are homophobic as well. They hate gay people. They hate uh, the identity of people who actually just are very open and honest about, well, actually, you know what? Gay rights and trans rights, very, very different things. And it's never been more obvious than what happened on Friday when we saw uh, the LGB Alliance, the Lesbian, Gay and Bi Alliance, um, their annual conference was disrupted by activists who turned up and threw thousands of bugs into the auditorium, meaning they had to move to, a, a, well, it stayed in the same venue, but had to move to a different room as crickets and cockroaches and other bugs uh, flew around. But also, again, as always, yet again, at so many of these Let Women Speak events organised by the fabulous Kelly J. Keane, this time the home of the suffragette Emily Davison, turning up in their balaclavas and their masks with their loud tailors, shouting down women. Let's talk about this with the one and only Kelly J. G. Kelly J. Keane, who joins us now. Good afternoon to you. Good afternoon. Um, thank you so much, Doris. Let's talk about what happened at your event. I mean, you do this all the time. You do these events. You just turn up, a bunch of women talking about, uh, you know, basically just women talking about the importance of women's sex-based rights uh, and safety. And virtually every time, whether it's Hyde Park or the home of Emily Davison, um, men, largely, large male activists turn up and try and shout you down. What happened? They do. Um, well, they turn up and, uh, look, I'm not going to lie, They're, they do amuse me. I, <laughs> and I know some women find it off-putting and intimidating, um, and so they don't come. So there's a very serious side to what they do yep. because they do intend to stop women from speaking, but they really don't send their best. Um, <laughs> They're they not the sharpest tools them. in the box, are they? <laughs> no, they don't even have rhyming slogans or chants, which... Um, you know, I, I just find it very funny. It turns me into some sort of uh, stand-up comedian when, when I'm faced with them. But the, the very serious point is that there are people that won't come. Um, they also try... I mean, somebody brought their children on that side to come and yeah. shout at middle-aged women, which I thought was yeah. so inappropriate. Um, and it's it's often men, and, and they genuinely want to stop women from speaking. And what was particularly bad yesterday is they seem to be very very loud when women were telling the most vulnerable of stories because we get a plethora of stories we get incredible poems and speeches yeah. and then sometimes we get very very personal and painful stories and and they seem to think that that was the most appropriate time to say the most vile things and that's the thing isn't it again it's simply women speaking you're not you're not sort of trying to trample on trans peoples or the activists you're just saying we just want to have our say let women speak is the organization and they literally trying to stop you speaking with the megaphones turning up very intimidating i've seen a lot of these videos often quite big blokes with the balaclavas and the masks i don't know why they feel the need to cover their faces you're not ashamed of what your views are you don't cover your face but often being very aggressive and we've seen numerous videos at Hyde Park Corner, at Speaker's Corner, where women are being jostled and, frankly, the police have not acted soon enough. Very intimidatory behaviour. Um, and and you, know, you yourself have been, you know, a victim of this repeatedly. Um, and, and no one seems to stop them. But, I mean, what they demand is that you say only one thing, which is that trans women are women. Why do you think they are so needy about needing you to say something which you don't believe and, frankly, that you and I and everybody say knows is not true? Well, because quasi-religious cults are very, very fragile, and so they need complete adherence. Um, and if you deviate at all, if you question any of it, and I got into this by saying, does my 11-year-old daughter um, have the right to go in a female-only space and not see an adult appendage, male appendage? Um, Say the word, penis. <laughs> anyway, wait a minute. Do you not do your daily check on whether or not you've got one? Because Keir Starmer says some of us have got one. I've only got them in the kitchen. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah it's just it's it's mind-blowing that they think the way that we're going to convince women to allow us in our spaces and we had one of the darlington nurses who's who's currently at nhs yeah. to have a uh, female in a space in a changing room but uh, the way we're going to convince those women is go and shout at them and scream at them in a park and then they'll yeah. say 
oh, by goodness, yes, of course you should come in. Yeah. <laughs> it's almost like there was a reason why we didn't want men in changing rooms and toilets and uh, refuges with us. I, it's, I can't work it out. Um, but again, this all ties in. Again, they're also they're also homophobic. And again, we know you know trans activists insisting that you know t that, that lesbian women, you know, by definition, women that they should have be forced to have sex, you know, have relationships with men who who identify as if they're women because otherwise they're transphobic. But then we saw the LGB conference uh, on Friday, um, the LGB Alliance conference, disrupted with people throwing bugs. I mean, that's virtually sort of terrorism. I mean, that is a blatantly, openly homophobic act. And yet everyone just kind of shrugs and doesn't think it's a big deal. If, 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 a, if, a, if a gay group or a women's group did that to a trans conference, all hell would break out. Well, this is what happens when you're actually just a group of heterosexual, entitled men leading leading the sort of trans activists. They're yep. predominantly heterosexual men, and they just want a little bit of that uh, oppression they're, by. They're, they're just very angry men. I think they're more scared of us than the, than, than angry at us. That's just, just sort of patly, just give them a nice cup of tea, poor things. Poor dears, intimidated by little old you. Uh, Kelly J. King, you keep up the great work, my love, founder of Let Women Speak. Uh, I'll let Claire speak now. <laughs> Oh, I think that is absolutely brilliant. You know, pat them on the shoulder, give them a, a nice cup of tea and a custard cream. They've obviously had ba something S bad has happened in their childhoods. I always put everything women. like that down. Like, What's can you imagine? Point? It's just so... It's, I'm embarrassed for them. But there yeah. we are. Somebody should definitely shout at more women in Collins. <laughs> <laughs>